This video is supported by Private Internet Access. With unlimited data for just $2.91 per month, they've got your VPN needs absolutely covered. Check it out at the link below. What's up guys, CP Modi here, back with another video. Now recently we did a video all about investigating if SSDs slow down over time, just like their hard drive brothers and sisters. And in fact, we concluded in that video with the Kingston V300 now drive that indeed they do slow down and damn, that slowdown can be absolutely incredible. But thanks to being an SSD, the slowdown isn't as noticeable because things like random performance are obviously going to be a lot better and all in all day to day usage, it isn't going to be as noticeable as what a hard drive might be. But that was a one big problem there and one big thing that I completely and utterly missed. And today we'll be sort of uh, re-looking into this question of does an SSD slow down over time like a hard drive might go ahead and do. Now, you may be thinking, hang on a second, you concluded last time it slowed down. What exactly is the problem right there? Well, the big problem is the actual drive that we went ahead and tested. When I went ahead and ran these numbers on my benchmarking system and just ran through Crystal Disk Mark, I got so excited that I found such a massive performance difference that I never noticed before that I kind of just forgot everything else about how SSDs actually worked and I missed a crucial part to an SSD. Well, not so much missed rather than just kind of skimmed over it because again, I was so excited about the findings and the results that I completely forgot about it. And the thing that I skimmed over was Sand Force. If you remember in that video, I mentioned the specs of that particular guy and Sand Force was definitely back there. Now, back when this guy was the hot new SSD to go ahead and buy, Sand Force was making a big push for on the fly data compression in their SSD controllers. And I actually remember reading this exact article clear as day just about on my old iMac before I actually built my own computer about how SSD uh, and SSD compressions were supposedly going to be the future over on Tom's hardware. I guess sure the site has changed and there's more ads but at the same time the article is still the same and I remember reading this back when it did come out. Whilst I won't go into on the fly compression and that kind of stuff because let's face it there could be a whole other video, maybe I'll go ahead and do a video at one point, uh, but just to keep things simple, uh, on the fly compression is something we do need to keep in in mind as over time thanks to this compression there are a number of actual slowdowns but at the same time there's also to a number of benefits so the, speaking of those benefits for on the fly compression there can be uh, things like for example longer lifespan as you're compressing the data on the fly is theoretically you're not taking up as much writes meaning the drive can theoretically last longer uh, and also do other things such as saving on space and that type of stuff so there are generally benefits to having on the fly compression at least on the surface. And let's face it, looking at the market today, there are literally no on-the-fly compression SSDs being sold. So we can see just how great that technology was now that it doesn't exist basically at all. Sure, it was cool back in the day, but yeah, it's not so great today. Now, the problem that I actually had with this entire video was based on that drive and that on-the-fly compression. If you've done any research into it or know much about it, uh, you'll know that over time, on-the-fly compression slows down like that. After you fill up the drive a few times, it just doesn't really go that well. Now, there's obviously reasons and we'll touch on them in just a moment, but the uh, Kingston drive that we did run with that Sandforce controller, sure, it gave us results of what drives that uh, have on-the-fly compression do slow down to, but it wasn't an accurate representation of what you might be able to go out and buy today and how it will perform over time. So after realizing my mistake, I went out and we're gonna be running these tests once again. Now, uh, back in the day when I was building my old system about six years ago, when I grabbed that Kingston drive, me and my friend were both in the computer shop at the same time, buying our computer parts together. He went ahead and grabbed a sort of semi pre-built computer thing. He had to throw in some storage and he grabbed the Samsung drive, whereas I grabbed the Kingston drive and put my system all together. I think I saved like $50 compared to him, but either way, those drives fell over, but either way, um, we went ahead and grabbed drives at the same time. Both of us started off with Windows 7, and both of us had just about the same use cases for our systems. We'd come home from class and play video games on it, go to bed, go off to class. This was back in high school, so yeah, didn't really have that much use other than playing video games off of it. Now, this particular Samsung drive that he did go ahead and pick up was the Samsung 840 Evo, and uh, looking around my office, I didn't have one available, so I did have to borrow his, and here's a 
again was back in the same time frame when I bought my original Kingston Drive. Both of them 120GB models, both of them used again for the same basic tasks for what we did go ahead and use. So I went ahead and borrowed it from him for a few days to go ahead and actually make today's video to see what kind of better representation we can get if we take a look at an SSD that is based on very similar technology to what we have here today. Now, no, don't get me wrong, no SSD from the past six years is going to be identical to what we have here today, but the Samsung drive that we are testing is a DRAMless setup that has decent flash and is also to running a decent in-house Samsung controller, so whilst it's not identical to what we have here today, it is definitely as close as I could get to what you could walk down to the shops today and go ahead and buy as uh, DRAMless SSDs are actually pretty popular in today's market. But Enough talking, let's get into some benchmarking. So I went ahead and grabbed that drive through Crystal Disk Mark onto this guy and we ran ahead and ran our numbers and damn, these aren't bad numbers compared to our Kingston drive that we tested last time. Even though this thing's like just about six years old this year, uh, it is still able to keep up and still punch where it used to punch back in the day of grabbing this drive with very decent and respectable numbers. In fact, it was able to outperform some of our cheap drives that we've been buying off Amazon lately despite just being super old. Now this particular drive was definitely looked after as the system did have Samsung's Disk Magician installed on there and it kept things like the firmware up to date and that kind of stuff, but it still has been quite heavily used. With 34 terabytes worth of data written to it and a very long time of 25,000 plus hours worth of runtime, just like our old Kingston drive, this thing is definitely been around the block quite a few times. And unlike our Kingston drive though, it is still perfectly fine. Jumping to a boot time test, they're definitely slightly slower than a clean, fresh installer Windows. However, the slowdown that we're experiencing here today is not so much physical and performance loss rather than just Windows just being old. When you have Windows running for a long time, things like registry changes go ahead and slow things down potentially, a lot of programs need to load, and a lot of, again, that slowdown we're experiencing is just simple OS slowdown rather than the actual drive itself. So you may be thinking, okay, then why is this the case? Did you just do something wrong on the first time? Well, actually not so much. Modern SSDs and SSDs that we're not featuring on the flight compression don't usually show signs of slowing down just like hard drives do in that market. And that's why when I compared it last time, I completely forgot about compression and that's why we went ahead and had these issues. I knew that yes, in theory, you should not slow down at all. But again, I was sort of just so excited Decided to find the results that I forgot that, uh, yeah, that wasn't exactly the case. When it comes to compression based SSDs, a lot of the time, just like these Sandforce guys, they essentially fragment the data uh, across the actual drive. So they don't really consolidate much in the NAND page files. And when it comes to running the trim command, doesn't really help much at all. Sure, you can format the drive. I think there's a specific way to format the drive to get back original performance. But again, once you fill it up a few times, boom, you start to lose that performance. But our 840 Evo that we did use here today, sure it doesn't feature a DRAM uh, chipset on this guy, which would have uh, helped performance quite a bit, but all in all, it was still able to go ahead and run thanks to the fact that it was kept up to date and SSDs don't really slow down in theory and also too in practice. The numbers in the last video definitely were representative of a Sandforce based or a compression based SSD, but what you can buy here today aren't compression based SSDs and the performance you do get out of them is definitely decent for most if not all SSDs on the market today. So okay then looking at the 840, we've gone ahead and done our testing here today and comparing the numbers between 840 and also to the Kingston V300 V now drive that we did test, there is a big difference. But both of these are definitely representative of what you can expect from an old SSD that you might pick up used here today, or what you might pick up today and then use into the future. As long as you keep things like the uh, firmware up to date and keep things like trim commands executed, the drives can basically perform at the same speed today as they will well into the future before they actually go ahead and die. The only real time they'll slow down is when they're actually going ahead and dying and then completely die when they don't work at all. So that then brings us to a TLDW of this video. I kind of did make a mistake in our original speed test video where we tested a Kingston drive that was based on a Sandforce controller that I'd totally forgotten was based on data compression on the fly and was pointed out to me by a good viewer that uh, I completely missed that very obvious thing. 
Thanks, Lee. I kind of made a mistake right there. I'm sure I'll see you down in the comments of this video right here. Uh, but don't get me wrong, those numbers that we did find in that video is still definitely valid for people who bought SSDs that were based on a compression type controller. What we can buy here today doesn't feature any compression and I don't think there's a single SSD on the market today that still features this type of compression because didn't really take off and no one really liked that type of performance hit. Sure, compression has its uh, benefits, but for today's market, we're mostly buying things that have a DRAM or a completely DRAM-less setups like what we have over my shoulder in terms of the drives right there. That said, with these DRAM-less setups that we do have in today's market, the performance numbers are still definitely on point, and unfortunately, I don't have original numbers for an 840 series drive, but I'm sure you can look them up on the internet. Uh, the performance numbers aren't still that bad, even after six years of some very heavy use cases. Synthetics were much more reasonable on this time round, and also to jumping into real world file transfers and real world usages, they were also to pretty much perfect here today. So as long as you maintain your SSD, keep the firmware up to date, there's really not that much of a reason for an SSD to slow down because there's no mechanical moving parts and nothing really to break down over time as it's all just solid state electronics, so there's no real problems there. Though that being said, Again, compression is where we're gonna have our problems right there. But do let me know down in that description or rather in that comment section, what kind of SSDs are you running on your system? And if you wanna pick up one of these SSDs or some of these SSDs that I talked about, I'll try and leave them linked down below, but I think the 840 series or at least the original ones are a little bit old, but I'll leave some SSDs linked down there. Guys, thanks all for watching. I'll catch you all in the next one.